It's time to tell the American people the truth. Quick, grab a snack and take in 10 mind-blowing food facts you didn't know. The weirder, the better. I want to go back to being weird. Hot chocolate is really old. Is your hot chocolate? This thick and creamy treat can make some of the best parts of your childhood come flooding right back. The mental picture that comes to mind might be the hot chocolate you grab at the drive through window on a blustery winter day. Or it could simply be the unmistakable, festively wrapped tin canister prominently displayed in your kitchen or pantry. If you haven't given hot chocolate much thought, that's about to change, because as it turns out, hot chocolate is well, old. Like, extremely old. So old, in fact, that the first documented consumption of the beverage dates to the Mayan people over 2,500 years ago. The original recipe wasn't exactly decadent, though. Hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. The drink boasted an unusual ingredient list. Cocoa seeds, cornmeal, and chili peppers, to be exact. As expected, the drink evolved over time, with versions of the Mayan hot chocolate recipe appearing in many cookbooks. The ingredient list is still a bit odd. Cayenne pepper is still there. As time ticked on into the present, hot chocolate was refined, thankfully, as a more subtle and sweet preparation that uses a thin, easy-mixing powdered chocolate. In this case, the ancient chocolate concoction got much better with age. But if you're feeling frisky, you could toss in a few chili pepper flavors lakes for good measure. The exploding peanut. I mean, like, <laughs> explosive. <laughs> okay, not technically speaking, but there is an oil that's found on the outer layer of the peanut that contains glycerol. Glycerol can be used to make nitroglycerin, which is a key element in the making of dynamite. Don't do it, obviously. This isn't an easy process. The oil needs to be extracted from the peanut and then refined in a certain way. With time and the scientific know-how, peanuts can produce the oily compound that could be used to craft the unstable explosive. Even without this knowledge, the lowly peanut doesn't tend to get the right kind of attention. Peanuts alone have an earthy texture that isn't for everyone. Peanut. They're tough, messy, and difficult to crack into. You've likely been to at least one restaurant that proudly displays the basket of peanuts on the bar with the peanutty sawdust floating around as you wait for your table. Add this to the knowledge of peanuts being a severe allergen that is banned in almost every school, and they can seem to be more trouble than they're worth. It also bears mentioning again that trying to extract the oil from a peanut to blow things up should not be attempted. Like they say on TV, don't try this at home. Kit Kat bars. We are off to the Kit Kat Club. Come on, join us. This interesting little factoid is sure to impress your friends during your next trivia night. Kit Kat bars are a staple in the Halloween basket of most kids around the globe. Over the years, we've seen the popular candy bar morph into ice cream and yogurt, and the flavors have become more exotic, too. Variety is, after all, the spice of life, and for Kit Kat, it's no different. You can now find a plethora of new flavors. Green tea, strawberry, tiramisu, dark chocolate, and raspberry flavor Kit Kat Cat bars are popping up on store shelves, and people are snapping them up more than ever. Reports have surfaced saying that 650 Kit Kat bars are consumed every second of every day around the globe. But there's more than meets the eye with one of America's favorite treats. All right, then, keep your secrets. That delectable filling that Kit Kat is well known for is far less innovative than you may have thought. Kit Kat bars contain a filling that is made of other mashed and smashed Kit Kat bars. Perhaps it's an effort to stay true to the brand, or maybe it's considered recycling. Regardless of the thought behind it, a giant pile of Kit Kat rejects gets squashed, mashed, and creamed before being stuck in between the wafers of the newly produced Kit Kats. This process creates what Kit Kat spokespeople call the choco layer. Whether you find the idea clever or lazy, you will certainly be looking more closely at the insides of the Kit Kat bar following your next purchase fruit salad trees. Making some fruit salad? Now this idea is revolutionary. Mother Nature really plays a key role here. While there's nothing better than a family trip to the local farm and picking your own apples, it's not everywhere you'll come across this variation on the plain old seasonal fruit tree. Through a process of grafting, more than one breed of fruit can be added into a pre-existing breed. This cultivation is called selective breeding. Many of the same steps need to be followed in order to start the growth process. The proper soil, climate, and temperature 
temperature stability are still a must, but the grafting process with time can give you the playfully coined fruit salad tree. It isn't an anything goes kind of situation, though, nor is the fruit salad tree a futuristic kind of frankenfruit. It's alive! The idea is based firmly in science. Certain fruits need to be grafted and grown together or the idea won't work. For example, plums, peaches, apricots, and nectarines, also known as stone fruits, need to be grown together. The same goes for citrus fruits like mandarins, oranges, lemons, and limes. So if you're considering putting, say, oranges with pears or apples with plums, nothing will happen. You'll also need to find a planting area that has full sun and shelter from the wind. Patience is key, too. The fruit salad trees take their precious time to grow, and you won't see fruit for up to 18 months after planting. Is it worth all the extra time and trouble? You will need to be the judge of that. Spam. How about a little, um, spam brulee? Spam was born and introduced to the world in 1937 and has remained a ready-made, weird, floppy food icon which gained popularity during World War II. Some people swear by it, with liberal use of the mystery meat on their weekly menu. Some are not as easily sold on the idea of spam. It's in the same sort of food category as hot dogs or bologna, if that's your thing. Hey, maybe you just need to try it to get a first-hand account of its cult-like status. After all, it comes in an easy-to-open can, it doesn't require any special preparation or refrigeration, and did we mention it comes in a can? It can be found in an abundance of flavors to suit any palate, but at its core, Spam is just spiced ham. Oh boy, spices. The part that really stands out is the fame Spam receives from one specific area of the world, Hawaii. Hawaii goes completely bonkers for the stuff, and they consume over 7 million cans of Spam every year. Spam now comes in several new flavors, from teriyaki to cheese, and even hot pepper flavors. It's also said to taste pretty good with fried rice. And if you really can't stomach the squishy, squashy spamness, it had another surprisingly functional purpose. In World War II, spam grease was used on soldiers' boots because it created a waterproof barrier. You can't get much more multi purpose than that. Boozy Pineapple. Knock, knock. Who's there? Pineapple. Pineapple who? While our journey to find the most mind-blowing food facts had us looking at Spam in Hawaii, let's stay in the state for a moment to appreciate another wildly popular food product with an interesting resume. Enter the pineapple. Pineapples are big and spiky, sweet, exotic, and a huge investment of time to grow. A pineapple can take up to two years to become full size. One of the most underrated facts about pineapples is the rising popularity of the fruit being used to make wine. It's a uh a sweet wine from Japan. Those who have tried the pineapple wine say the taste is strong and even a bit sour if you aren't used to it. But enjoying the spiky fruit in its boozy form is said to be quite a refreshing change to the stuffy old grape, if you are into that kind of thing. The question is, does pineapple wine require a little tiny umbrella when being served? Spicy Bugs I can't eat bugs anymore. This fact isn't for the squeamish or weak of heart. It involves the popular, potent, and versatile oregano plant and some unwelcome household pests. You have been warned. But now you're asking, how gross can oregano really be? It makes a nice compliment to lots of high-class dishes. However, according to the Food Defect Levels Handbook, crushed oregano is allowed to contain up to 300 insect pieces per 10 grams. Why on earth would the Food and Drug Administration allow that level of nasty into a pristine bottle of crushed oregano. Nobody knows for sure what's in it. The answer lies in the premise that up to a certain level, the creepy crawly microscopic pieces of insect pose no risk or hazard to the health of the consumer. In short, it's considered harmless. Completely gross and shocking, but harmless. The handbook mentioned the potential for the little spicy bug parts in an issue dating back to 2018, but the recent update in the manual maintains that oregano has the highest instance of bug particles found in any food listed in the FDA guidelines. So perhaps just cross your fingers and hope the odds are in your favor. You're probably just fine. 
cereal scams. They put these things into cereal boxes for kids. The cost of cereal has always been high, not to mention the fact that the boxes sort of seem to be shrinking. Surely you must have noticed the small box that never feels more than half full, costing top dollar, and the whole thing is poof and gone after not even a full week of breakfasts. It isn't just a passing fad, either. Cereal costs a small fortune now. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, prices for cereal averaged 306% higher in 2022 than when they hit the mainstream in the 1970s. Inflation is out of control. Even if you have a wallet full of cash to spend on cereal, you might just change your mind after this juicy tidbit. While most people figure that the ever-popular fruity pebbles are not exactly made with high-quality fruit extracts, the actual ingredient list is pretty sad indeed. Fruity pebbles are just puffed-up pieces of white rice. If you still aren't surprised, the kicker is in the process. The sad little rice pieces are puffed, then deflated and puffed up a second time to give them their texture. Add in some color and there you have it. High-priced, inflated, then deflated rice puffs. It doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? Animal Crackers writes, Here are your animal crackers. <laughs> this one is a win for animal lovers, and lovers of crackers, and lovers of animal crackers. This may feel like a walk down memory lane, but try to picture the animal crackers of yore. They were just about as bland a food as you can get. The crackers tasted sort of dusty, but the mild flavor was overall tasty. But the true draw to these cookies were their animal shapes. It was all about the detail and the general adorableness that brought a smile to the face of even the fussiest toddler. What you may not have noticed is the sad packaging. I'm sad. Starting in the early 1900s, animal crackers may have been cute and tasty after you took the packaging off. What you may not have seen is the animals on the front of the box always appeared in small cages. After a lengthy battle with activists, the animals were finally freed from their cages on the front of all animal cracker boxes after 2018. The sad packages are now a thing of the past, and while the taste remains status quo, you can feel a lot better handing out boxes at a family barbecue or child's birthday. Space Grub Just, uh, grabbing myself some grub. Food in space? Well, obviously, astronauts need to eat, too. And as it turns out, the food isn't as bad as it seems in the movies. There might be a good selection of freeze-dried or dehydrated space food, but you might be shocked to learn that the first food eaten in space was none other than applesauce. Turns out, it packages and keeps shockingly well, so it can be enjoyed and appreciated as a comfort food in the most unlikely of circumstances. Another bonus space food fact? Yes, please. The humble the humble potato was the first food planted and grown in space. Back in 1995, five space spuds were successfully grown while in orbit in the Astroculture Plant Growth Facility on the International Space Station. The basic potato may be missing the wide variety of tasty toppings you can get on land, but add that to the applesauce and you have a pretty decent space picnic.